what's going on guys in this video we're going to get started with next.js next.js is an open source react framework that provides server-side rendering and it will also allow us to generate static websites for react applications next.js also provides some other features such as routing automatic compilation and bundling image optimization built-in css support and we can also use next to create API endpoints to provide backend functionality. So those are just some of the Next.js features. Today, we're going to get started with Next by taking a look at how pages, routing, and linking work. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. There are two ways to create a new Next.js project. We can do it manually by installing the libraries, or we can use create next app. That is a command pretty similar to create React app. If we want to create the Next.js project manually, we need to install three libraries. So this will be npm install, and the libraries will be next, react, and react DOM. So that will be the manual approach, let's say. And the most straightforward way will be using create next app. So this will be npx create next app. Here we can assign a name to our project, let's say shops app. And basically it's going to install React, React DOM and Next libraries for us. It's going to create a couple of directories that we're gonna see in a minute. And it's going to install all the required dependencies. Okay, our next JS application has been successfully created. So here we can run three commands. We can start a development server running npm run dev. We can build the application for production running npm run build and we can run the server in production mode running npm start now let's enter to the project folder and let's go to visual studio code and let's take a look at the initial structure of the project this is the project structure that we get when we run create next app we have a pages folder with an index page, with this API folder, and with this underscore app JS file, we get this public folder, and we get this styles folder. And let's take a look at the package.json file. And here we have the three dependencies, next, react, and react DOM. And here we have some scripts that will allow us to run the server in development mode. This will allow us to generate the application for production. And this command will allow us to run the application in production mode. Next, JS is built around the concept of pages. And basically a page is a React component. So let's say that we create a new page here within this pages folder. So if we call this page about.js, this file will be within the pages folder like this. So this will be mapped to slash about. The same way we already have the index file here. So this will be mapped to the root of the website. Okay, now let's start the server in development mode. npm run dev. And I'm going to open the browser side by side here. And this is the index page. So if we make any change here, let's say, uh, welcome to, let's change this. Let's say, welcome to pragmatic reviews. If we say this, we're gonna see that this is going to change as we can see here. So we have this live reload. Okay, and now let's create the about page. So we need to create a new file within the pages folder. I'm going to call it about.js. And this will be a React component. So this component will be really simple. We can do something like about, we can find this constant. We can use an arrow function for the component. And we can basically return the HTML of the component. Let's use a really simple example here. So here we can say about page. And we need to export this component. So this would be export default about. And that's it, we have our first page created. So now if I go to localhost 3000 slash about, we're gonna see this div rendered in the page. 
And the same happens if I make a change here about my page, let's say. It's going to refresh the contents as we can see here again. Okay, now let's create another page. So let's say that in our shops application, we want to access the shop page by the identifier of the shop. So there's a naming convention that we can use in order to route the specific shop by its identifier. So we can add a new page here within the pages folder. And let's say that we create a subfolder here. We can call it shops. And we can follow a naming convention that will allow us to access the shop identifier that we get in the URL from the React component within the page. So here we can use square brackets and we can pass the shop identifier here like this. And this will be the name of the file. By using this naming convention, we can access the shop ID within our page and our React component within that page. So now let's create that folder. This will be shops. And within this folder, let's create this file. So this is square brackets, shop ID dot JS. And in this case, this will be mapped in our website to slash shops, the slash any identifier, let's say one, two, three. So by using the next JS router, we will be able to access this identifier. Okay, and here we need to create a new component, const shop. Again, this will be a simple arrow function. Here we need to use a router. This is a special object provided by next.js. So this is router. And here we can use a hook provided by next that is use router. And we need to import this hook. So this is import use router from, and this is next slash router. Okay, and now we can access the shop ID. This is const. And this will be shop ID. And here we need to use the query property from the router. So this is router.query. And now let's simply return a paragraph with the value of the shop ID. So this is shop ID. And let's print it here. And let's export this component. So this is export default shop. Okay, now let's open the browser. And now if we go to localhost 3000 slash shops slash 111, we're gonna see shop ID equals to 111. And if we change the ID, let's say one, two, three, again, it's going to print that value here. And another thing that we can do here, let's say that we want to pass a parameter as a query string here, uh, location equals remote. So if we want to access this value, again, we can get this value from the query property of the router, like this, show ID, location, and let's print that location here. Let's say location, and this is location. Let's save this, and we're gonna see the value here. If we change the value, let's say San Francisco, again, it's going to show the value updated here. Okay, now let's say that in our shops app, we want to allow the users to post questions about jobs. So now we're gonna need to route those uh, questions to show them on in our website. So we need to route the shop ID and the question ID associated to that job. So in that case, we can do something like this. We can add a new JavaScript file like this. Pages, shops. Here we can use this same structure as the directory name using square brackets. And then 
again, we can use the same naming convention for the question ID. So this is question ID dot JS. And this will be mapped to a URL like this, slash shops, slash, this is the show ID, let's say one, two, three, and then the question ID, if we want to use numbers to identify the questions, we can use four, five, six, for example. And within this page and the component of this page, we will be able to access these two values, the show ID and the question ID. Now let's create a new folder. So this will be square brackets, show ID. And within this folder, I'm going to create a new file. Again, square brackets. And this will be question ID dot JS. Okay, and this component will be pretty similar to the shop component. I'm going to grab everything from here. I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to make a few tweaks. So this will be question. This will be shop ID and it will be question ID to access all the values that we get in the URL using the query property from the router. And this will be show ID and this will be question ID. And this will be question ID. And we need to export the question component. Now let's open the browser. And here we can do shops slash one, two, three slash four, five, six, let's say. And as we can see here, we get the show ID one, two, three, and the question ID four, five, six. Okay, now let's use an special component provided by Next.js to include links in our website. Okay, now let's change the index page and let's add a link to this URL, for example. So let's go to the index and I'm going to make some changes here really quickly. And let's say this will be shops up. And here we need to import a special component provided by Next that is the link component. So this import link from, and this is next slash link. And we're going to add the link here. So this is link. This link has a property that is the href with the path. So I'm going to grab that path from here. And here we need to use the a tag like this. And here we can say, go to shop ID equals to one, two, three, and question ID equals to four, five, six. Let's save this and let's open the browser. Here we have the link. Let me remove this. So we just have the link here. So if I click here, this is going to send me to that page with the shop ID and the question ID. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching and I see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.